Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved on a God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Second Timothy chapter 1 Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Life is in Christ Jesus. It is a promise of God. So nothing else can give you life. God has not ordained anything for life outside of Jesus Christ. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son. Now, Timothy is not Paul's child, but spiritual child. Timothy saved under Paul. Paul was accounted to raise him in the Lord. Timothy's dad is a Greek. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. So, God and Jesus are the ones that are author of grace, mercy, and peace. I thank God, always thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers, that would be Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, with pure conscience. Oh, if you... Oh, if you could say that. If your conscience is pure and clean, you're at rest. You're at peace. There's no troubles. There's no problems. You're innocent. That without ceasing, I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Prayer was uh, Paul was a prayer warrior for all. Greatly desire to see thee. Being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. Paul wanted to see Timothy. He wanted to be with him. But Timothy had to be separated. Paul had to be separated. He said, mindful of thy tears. The time when, when Paul told Timothy, you know, you got to stay here. 1 Timothy 1. you got to stay. i got to go. we got to depart. And it caused Timothy tears. There will be no more departing over in New Jerusalem. There will be no more tears in New Jerusalem. No more goodbyes. And even Paul the Apostle, Paul the man called of the will of God, did not know if he'll ever see Timothy again. Paul was a prophet. Paul healed. But as the end of his ministry came, he was healing no more. He was unable to tell, well, I see you. I don't even know where I'm going. The great Paul had no idea what tomorrow held. That I may be filled with joy. I want to see you. That would be my joy to see you, Timothy. When I call the remembrance of the unframed. What is frame? Frame is Hollywood. It's acting. It's pretending. You did not pretend to be my friend. You did not uh, put on an act, Timothy. Faith that is in thee. Which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois. So faith can be taught. Faith can be brought on by somebody else. And thy mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that in thee also. The faith that his mother and his grandmother had. Taught that young boy Timothy. That grew up to be a minister with Paul. And a faithful minister. Grandma and mom, 
You need to raise your child. You want your child to be right? You better raise them in the faith. That's what Paul said. And what's the attitude of Timothy? The Bible says you have to raise your children. Now, we are told that Timothy's father was Greek. We can only assume we don't know that he didn't follow God. It was just left up to the mother and the grandmother to raise his child right. And they did it. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that they'll stir up the gift of God. What's the gift of God? Teaching, preaching, faith, the fruit of the Spirit. Remember that, which in thee, by the putting on of my hands, ordained. So we're specifically looking at the gift of God of being able to teach and preach. And Paul said, lay, lay no hands suddenly on anybody. First Timothy. So when he laid hands on Timothy, he knew Timothy was qualified. And that's called a gift of God. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That verse ought to be memorized and written down and starred and highlighted because when we want to see a psychiatrist, there's that verse there. There ought to be no anxiety in our life. There ought to be nothing that we fear. There ought to be nothing that we got to go speak to another person about because God has given us a sound mind. Now, I understand for some people, a medical condition can be that your body is out of whack, if I can say it like that. And there are some people, because of chemical or because of whatever their body, they're lacking. But when you got an entire nation on pills to calm them down, you got them on drugs to, to make them feel better, and you got them relying on counselors and not God. That's not a Bible doctrine. For the majority of the people and the few that do honestly suffer, for the most of the people, God has not given us a spirit of fear. He has given us a sound mind. And this has been such a lucrative business that even Christians will come in Christian counseling. Well, sound mind. It's what God said. So it's in the, the Holy Scriptures by the Holy Spirit. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. So you can't say that God who has not given us fear, oh, I can't speak to people. I'm not afraid of the people. That excuse in verse 7 and 8 says, you know what? You can do it. You are capable. God tells us all to go in all the world and preach the gospel. I can't do it. Then you're telling us that God's a liar. The Bible says, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. Now, you don't confess Jesus Christ, you don't speak about Jesus Christ, then I have biblical doctrine to say, I wonder about your true salvation. According to how you're saved. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Testimony that he died. He was buried. He rose again. He suffered and died for us. He lived God. He lived a man. He lived sinless. He died for our sins. He arose from that, from that tomb, came out victorious. He is seated at the right hand of the Father right now. He's alive and well and willing that all should be saved. Be thou not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. Now we're going to see in this, in this book, we're going to see the end of the life of Paul. And it's not good. If Christians are supposed to have prosperity and, and greatness and wonderful things, they forgot to read 2 Timothy. Paul is closing his life to, to Timothy, this book. And he says, I'm in jail for the word of God. Great, isn't it great? Paul is innocent and he's in jail. Prosperity. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. 
prosperity gospel. Paul says, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You're going to preach the word of God? Be in part of the afflictions of the word of God. Prosperity gar garbage uh, gospel is from the lake of fire, the smell of sulfur and burning of Satan's lie. Christians are called to suffer by the word of God. And don't be ashamed of it. Take part. Get involved. Who... God, who has saved us. I thought Jesus saved us. I thought the gospel is the salvation that Jesus died for our sins and arose again to save us. That on the cross he took on our sins to please God, to be the mediator between God and man, which is 100% true. But God, who has saved us. That means that must have been God on that cross. Acts 20, 28. And called us with a holy calling. How's that? A righteous, unsin calling. Not according to our works. It's not what we've done. It's not what we ever can do. It is not our merit. But according to his own, God's own purpose, and grace, see verse 2, God the Father and Christ Jesus, they're one in one. Which was given us in Christ Jesus before the word world began. Oh, look at that. Before God said, let there be light. God knew what Adam was going to do. And Jesus Christ, before God said anything about solar systems and trees and monkeys and man, Jesus Christ and God the Father together said, we know what Lucifer is going to do. We know what's going to happen with Eve. We know that Adam is going to die. Father, I will step in and do what needs to be done. Before man falls, Jesus said, I will die for their sins. So when you go to hell, you are doing it against the will of God and the finished work of Jesus Christ, which was done before man even fell. The foreknowledge of God knew we were going to be sinners, and Jesus stepped up to the plate and said, I'll do it. I'll do it for him. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ. Adam didn't know. David didn't know. Solomon didn't know. Moses didn't know. Elijah. All the Old Testament saints. And even the 12 disciples before the book of Acts had no idea about Jesus Christ in the finished even though they prophesied it. When Jesus showed up on the, on the scene, in 33 and a half years, he did everything of all the prophecy, fulfilled the prophecy, fulfilled that law. They're still like, who is this guy? And it wasn't revealed the gospel until God called a man named Saul. And said, I've got some mysteries for you to teach. And Peter even says in his book, I believe it's 2 Peter, Paul has spoken some, wow, hard things. Peter did not understand. I want you to go to a bunch of Italians and preach the gospel to them of Jesus. I ain't going, Lord. Ain't been no, don't you call them unclean. Then after he saw Cornelius and his family get saved, then he got to, whoa, wait a minute. Now God is reaching out to them. I can't call them unholy anymore. I can't call them unclean no more. God's reaching out. No one knew that. Appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death. I'm not going to die. You say, yes, you will. My flesh will. But absent from the body, present with the Lord. 
This body may die, but I won't. A billion seconds. I'll leave this earth and be with Jesus Christ. And has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. I'm saved by my baptism. Uh-uh. I'm saved by what church I belong to. Uh-uh. It is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ that a man obtains life, eternal life. That's how it's done. No other way. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher, Paul, an apostle, Paul, and a teacher, Paul, of the Gentiles. So a preacher is not an apostle, and an apostle is not a teacher. And there are no apostles today. We've already talked about that. There's a difference between a preacher and there's a difference between a teacher. Not all teachers are preachers, but yet all preachers should be teachers. Oh, I forgive you. My nose is running. There are people who can teach a Sunday school lesson but can't preach the Bible. There's nothing wrong with that. That's two different offices. You got the ability to teach and can't preach, just don't don't feel bad. But a preacher should be able to teach also. For the which cause I also suffer these things. What? For being a preacher, for being an apostle, and being a teacher. I'm suffering because of that. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I for I know who I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Romans 8.38. That's where that hymn comes from. I love the hymns that come from the Bible and not from man's thoughts and ideas. There's too many hymns out there what men think and have nothing to do with the Bible. This is taken from the hymn right from the Bible. And God says, listen. Though I be in jail. Though I'm suffering. Though I'm in affliction. I am not ashamed of that. And I know that that is not going to depart me from God's love. If they chop off my head. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. If they tie me to a faggot and light that faggot and burn me to death. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. If they tie me to two animals and rip my body into two. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Nothing's going to, and Paul spoke about this earlier. Nothing's going to separate me from the love of God. If I hold my chest and have a heart attack. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. If I just go to sleep and don't wake up, I'm going to be absent from the body, present with the Lord. No matter what, I am not ashamed. I know God's going to keep me. That's wonderful. Religion can't tell you that. These things John says, I have written that you might know you have eternal life. That's what Paul is saying. Compare Paul and John. They're remarkable. They back each other scripture with scripture. This verse is an assurance of your salvation. No matter what you go through. No matter what trials, what tribulations that Satan can throw at you, cannot separate you from the, from the love of God. Hold fast. Keep it. The form of sound words. Look at that. Word of God. Keep the word of God. Which thou hast heard of me. So it's got to be the word of God. Paul. In faith. Believe, even though you haven't seen it, believe. And love, which is in Christ Jesus. Do not quit, Timothy. Hold to the word of God above all things. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwelleth in us. The good thing. The word of God. The calling of the ministry. Keep it. Do it. Serve God and be pleased. And it may cause affliction. It may cause suffering. But don't be ashamed. 
keep going. Keep fighting. Remember, I've told you about it. Remember, I've told you I'm, I'm in the process of suffering. Jesus Christ suffered. The apostles are suffering. The brethren are suffering. Keep going. Don't quit. This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me. They forsook Paul. When Paul's coming to the end of his life, there are people in Asia saying, See you, Paul. Goodbye. Had it with you. Too much. That suffering, I, got, I can't do that. I'm going to give in to the world so I don't have to have that miserableness. I'm ashamed of you, Paul. And listen, as my family served the Lord and tried to do right, and, and we got the street ministry, we got the bumper sir, we've had plenty of Christians come up to you. No, we don't want that. God wouldn't do that. That, that is so foolish. Listen, we want our plaque on the wall. We want people to gratify to us. We don't want that suffering. We don't want people coming in our face and cuss us out. We don't want that. Of whom are Phygelius and Hermogenes. I'm going to sound like a milk product. You see what Paul just did? Paul gave the names and has named names in his writings. And that, that's hard to do in America today because we got we got so many lawyers in this nation that they've got to fight for to get your attention to sue somebody over little things. Call us if you got in a car accident. Uh, you know, Smith and Smith. Well, I want to call Smith if Smith hit me with his car. You're in the hospital. I, I spent most of my time in the hospital with, with illnesses of family and all that. And it makes me sick that you're sitting in an emergency room or you're sitting in an x-ray room or you're sitting in a room, a waiting room for someone to get done with their test. And there's that idiot up there advertising, if you had a medical problem, if a doctor's done you wrong, call us. Lawyers should be at the bottom of the Red Sea with the, with the rest of the Egyptians. You know, you only find one good lawyer in the Bible. I think his name is Zealus. This now knowest all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Phygelius and Hermogenes. I don't know if they're saved, but he names them. They left Paul. They gave up on Paul. We're going to learn more names later. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus. He must be saved. Because watch what he does. See, Timothy, people have left me, but it's not all miserable. It's not all terrible. May God damn those motorcycles, I'll tell you. If you hear a bunch of noises, it's the idiots on bikes. For he oft, often, a lot refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain what's that chain paul being in shackles and in jail he would come to paul in prison and give him refreshment needs change of clothes water food prayer with him give him some parchments help him sit down and talk with him listen to paul whatever paul needed on for us Help Paul. And help Paul keep going and keep striving. When everybody else failed, there's Onaphrasis. May God bless you with an Onaphrasis in your life. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. When Paul was a prisoner in Rome, this guy visited every... Where is he? Where is he? Where's Paul? Can't find him. Where is he? I found him. That almost sounds like the Song of Solomon. When that woman looks for her for her bride for her bridegroom, sought. Paul becomes a type of Jesus Christ, and this man becomes a type of Christian. Where's Jesus? Where is he? He's not in this church. Let me go find another church. He's not in this city. Let me find where I can find where he is. Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. In what day? 
at the judgment seat uh, at the judgment seat of Christ. May this guy get rewarded with mercy for what he's done for me. Gold, silver, or precious stone in that day when the Lord calls us home. And how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus. That's where that is where Timothy is sent. So we go first Timothy chapter one. Verse one. First Timothy one no, it's not one one, it's three. One three, and I brought thee to buy still at Ephesus. So you know what he's telling Timothy here? That man that's in your congregation, he's a great help. Hook on to him. He'll take care of you, Timothy. If he's still at Ephesus. But the Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy in that day. And how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus. Thou knowest very well. You know this man, Timothy. You know what he's doing. Remember, Timothy also traveled with Paul. Through the jails, through the persecution, through the problem. And Timothy would come across this man and his help. Timothy, find him out. And he'll help you. Encouragement. 